Tanzania's Serengeti, home for millions of wild creatures. Few people have witnessed this spectacle of big game, yet one man, Hugo van Lawick, has made the Serengeti his home for more than a quarter of a century, recording the behavior of the animals around him. A life's ambition, Hugo van Lawick followed the great migration of wildebeest for over a year. He captured on film amazing scenes, some of which we may find uncomfortable to watch, as both the wildebeest and their predators struggle to survive. He witnessed scenes of tragedy and of triumph as the herd advances around the Serengeti, searching for places where the grazing is best. So, through the lenses of one of the world's most distinguished filmmakers, we witness one of the greatest epics of life on Earth. There's evidence that wildebeest have amassed in giant herds on the East African plains for over a million years. Today, there are a million and a half of them, participants in the most spectacular migration of land mammals on the planet. Now they must head south. The heavy rains have arrived and will turn the soil into sticky mud. There's no real beginning or end to the wildebeest's trek. They're simply engaged on an endless pilgrimage for food and water. Many have made the round trip before. For the young, this may be their first journey. For others, it'll be their last. Those fortunate to make this crossing of the Mara River still have many miles to go. <laughs> the nomadic herds meander across a vast area of savanna that stretches between Kenya and Tanzania. With the onset of heavy rains, the wildebeest drift out of Kenya's Maasai Mara and move into Tanzania's Serengeti National Park. The Serengeti's boundaries were drawn around their route, and along with adjoining regions, totals over 18,000 square miles. Through this zone, they'll travel on a circular journey of more than 500 miles. The vast landscape of the Serengeti's short grass plains are preferred to the wooded country to the north. There's ample room for many animals to congregate and little undergrowth to obscure predators. Here the grass is green and rich in calcium extracted from the volcanic soil beneath it. The wildebeest population is never static. It shrinks in the face of disease and droughts, then expands again in years of good rainfall and good grazing. In 1961, there were only 200,000. Since then, they've increased nearly eightfold. Such numbers place a huge burden squarely on the back of a particular beetle. Dung beetles process over 8 million pounds of manure a day. 
fertilizing the Serengeti's soil, which might otherwise become a giant dung heap, or quite possibly, a desert. But for most of the time, the Serengeti is like a paradise on Earth, albeit a savage one. Hyenas thrive on the annual crop of wildebeest calves. So do jackals and other animals. It's February, and after a gestation period of about eight months, the female wildebeests begin to give birth in what is one of the most exacting strategies in nature. In just three weeks, over 80% of all wildebeest calves will be born for the year. This mass delivery may be a ploy against animals that eat meat. It simply overwhelms them with easy prey and ensures that many young wildebeest will survive. a race for life. A calf can walk within five minutes of birth, quicker than any other hoofed animal, and will gallop as fast as its mother within two weeks. Sometimes running seems easier than just standing. All of the activity attracts attention and a silverback jackal brazenly enters a group of carving females. It's a rude awakening for the newborn calf, but the jackal's nerve far outweighs his sense of danger. Jackals have pups to feed, and this makes them bold. Curiously, the mother gets no help from other wildebeest. She's able to fend off one jackal, but becomes agitated at the approach of two hyenas. Working in pairs, the hyenas easily outwit the mother wildebeest. Female wildebeest can actually postpone delivery for at least an hour if they sense danger. Two out of three calves will reach adulthood, and the herd grows by nearly 500,000 at this time of year. When Hugo van Lauwijk was filming, a pack of African wild dogs was still roaming the Serengeti. Highly social, they form territories here and won't tolerate hyenas prowling near their pups.
Hyenas have amazingly thick skins, and this one is none the worse for his experience. Renowned for their superb hunting skills, wild dogs almost always bring down their victims. Though on the Serengeti, nothing is certain. This remarkable sequence captures a rare turn of events. A female and her calf are first separated from the herd. The pack has targeted the calf. Nothing, it seems, can save it now. Though only a week old, it can already reach 20 miles an hour. Unable to outrun the dogs, the two turn and face their attackers. The calf's only defense is to stay close to its mother. She does her best to keep the pack at bay. For a moment, it appears that the struggle will soon be over. <sighs> Wild dogs easily bring down large prey, so why they should have so much difficulty dispatching this young wildebeest is a mystery. For nearly half an hour, the unrelenting onslaught continues. <laughs> Finally, the exhausted dogs unexpectedly call off the attack. Mother wildebeest and her weak old calf, almost certainly destined to die, have become victorious. For the wild dogs, they and their pups may go hungry for now, but they're sure to eat later in the day. May is the start of the dry season. In the absence of rain, grass has ceased to grow and the herds begin to move northwards. In the melee, some calves become separated from their mothers along the way. By themselves, the calves stand little chance of growing up. Sometimes the best defense is to go on the offensive. Unless it can locate its mother, more attacks will likely follow. Mm. 
desperate, orphans will approach anything that moves, like a Thompson's gazelle or even a lion. Mothers may search for their missing calves for days, but only their own will be allowed to suckle. Not all newborn are as fortunate. Although the mother calls, this crippled calf can never follow. Born with shortened limbs, it has nevertheless inherited a strong will to survive. In response to her appeal, the calf tries to keep up, but to no avail. Nature is ruthless with such deformed creatures. Animals rarely die of old age on the Serengeti. Even so, some wildebeest manage to attain a remarkable 25 years. But the young and old, the fit and the infirm, are ultimately devoured by a specialized group of scavengers. A crucial company of undertakers that glean life from death. By June, the tropical sun beats down unrelentingly. It bakes the earth and for now turns fertile soil to dust, transforming an Eden into a desolate landscape. The dry wind confirms that the rains have disappeared and once cool watering holes are transformed into desiccated bowls of dust. The plains here have been grazed bare and so the herd must move on. Periodically they rest a little, then travel onwards both night and day in their quest for life-giving grasses. They cover more than 10 miles a day. They pass copias, sentinels of ancient rock, and on to the fertile northwest corner of the Serengeti, where grasses full of nourishment still stand tall. A spectacular sight. Here the great herds can feast, munch and chew the cud. It's one of the most impressive sights in the world. Brought into fine fettle by the good feeding, some of the bulls race ahead to set up territories to begin the rut. Males, three years and older, need to lure groups of females and mate with them. They battle and often perform bizarre displays in their efforts to attract the cows. Up to 16 females may be herded into each bull's territory. Many cows move from one bull to another, maximizing their chances of becoming pregnant. Food and water are the only priorities above reproduction. A drink of water can sometimes carry a high price. Whether the hungry lioness and her cubs survive or not 
depends upon her strength and skill in suffocating her victim, a 500-pound bull, perhaps beyond his prime. During the migration, lions capitalize on the glut of food as the herd moves through their established territories. Stampedes sometimes leave injured animals and are the biggest cause of calves becoming separated from their mothers. Like one giant heaving organism, they roll over the land, trampling the grass beneath their hooves. Wildebeests are inquisitive creatures and will investigate other animals that they're less familiar with, like these woolly-necked storks. With the rains now long gone from here as well, once clear pools slowly turn to mud. Though lions often frequent these sites, there now appears no threat, and the mother can wait for her calf to follow. But once free of the morass, a danger still exists. The sun bakes the mud into a resilient crust that can prove lethal. Ever onwards, the herd enters the tall grass of the Serengeti's western flank, escorted by the ever-present hyenas. The arrival of the wildebeest has been awaited for months. Here live great numbers of a formidable adversary. In the Serengeti's bush country, feudal lords still rule the land. Many of the Serengeti's 1,500 lions live here. This young wildebeest is fortunate. The lioness has chosen a larger meal.
zebra also fall to lions. They travel with the herds and feed on rough herbage, a plant food that's disliked by the closer cropping wildebeest. The carpet of wildebeest rolls on mile after mile, as if driven by instinct, and for the older animals by the experience of previous years to cross the farthest horizon. <laughs> Lions have fed again during the night, but cheetahs wait until it's light to begin their hunt. little defense against the hunting skills of a mother cheetah with her own family to support. <laughs> Cattle egrets and wattle starlings feed on insects drawn to the herd. Others must avoid the tramp of a million hooves. These are African ground hornbills. Densely overgrown areas make wildebeest nervous. They move swiftly. They stop just long enough to slake their thirst. To these migrating creatures, the sea of tall grass is like shark-infested waters. A killer surfaces, and it's too late to escape. A few calves are dropped along the migratory route. While the deep underbrush may help to conceal the calves temporarily from danger, the herd is moving so quickly that they must break cover. Unfortunately, there's a good chance that these calves will become separated from their mothers. And without their supply of milk, they'll soon become dehydrated and too weak to carry on. Some animals are brought down by a minute killer. Fly larvae can wriggle up the nasal passages and burrow into the wildebeest's brain, destroying the animal's coordination. Leopards capitalize on the glut of prey and drag their victims into the trees, away from more earthbound competition. Elephants also migrate, searching for food and water, but they pay scant attention to wildebeest. In fact, their daily lives hardly impinge on each other, except that by demolishing trees, elephants generate more grassland, which is good for grazers.
water cabbages cover the top of a pond, a drinking hole for migrating antelope. Beneath the vegetation live unexpected occupants. The hippopotamus is a territorial creature. It spends the day in water to protect its easily sunburned skin and surfaces at night to feed on land. Within their group, fierce battles are fought for dominance. But against the wildebeest, they bear no grudge. Great herds continue onwards over the Serengeti, pursued by their nomadic enemies. Here, the dry earth raises a veil and foils any chance of attack. The wildebeest rut, triggered by a full moon, began three weeks ago. Now it's almost over. As the migration advances, bulls continue to vie over territories. Their freehold consists of little more than a small plot of land, sufficient to joust on, but without it, they're impotent. Challenges are merely ritual posturing and rarely lead to injury. Some bulls will complete the rut exhausted and in poor condition, as they fail to feed properly for several weeks. The outlook for them is not good, but at least they've fathered a new crop of calves. Here, the earth has become extremely dry, but paradise lies just ahead. This is a paradise shared by many. This oasis amid the turmoil is the Gromiti River, a year-round source of water on which the migrating animals can count. Here lies a foe beyond compare. Giant crocodiles lurk in this river. For the wildebeest, 
The only fate worse than daring to drink from this river is their need to cross it. Hundreds of Nile crocodiles live along this section of the river. Nurtured once a year on wildebeest flesh, some of them are monsters 20 feet long and weighing three quarters of a ton. But the wildebeest have gone without water for almost five days. Now they must drink or die of thirst. try for young calves, and still they must drink. But it's the adult wildebeest that have caught the eye of the more skilled hunters. The massive reptile carries its victim into deeper water. Flesh eaters such as these enormous crocodiles are oblivious to the stress and suffering they cause. They must simply kill in order to live. Other crocodiles quickly make their way toward the scene. There is no escape. Crocodiles have come to know the favored watering sites of the herds and feed there often. Nevertheless, the urge to drink is overwhelming. The vast majority will escape these African jaws. The urge to migrate north is also overwhelming. The first one makes it across. Then another, and another. Fertile feeding grounds of the Masai Mara lie to the north, beyond the Gromiti River. Not even the crocodiles can stop them now. Mm. 
Nine months have passed, and the herds are within days of reaching their final destination in Kenya's Masai Mara. Through forests and bushland, they pass under the lofty gaze of the Masai giraffe. Acacia scrub provides only some relief after the wide open plains. The journey has taken its toll on many. A resident honey badger leaves his den to forage and inspects the passing throng. But nomadic hyenas are never far behind. They follow the migration, and as predators are as much a part of it as are their prey. Some of the herd will move outside the park and nearer the influence of man. Though wildfires can occur naturally, today farmers and herders set them alight annually to clear their land of dead wood and grass and stimulate new growth. Flames know no boundaries and may burn unchecked through the parklands during the driest months. With the rains, new growth will come to the parched places, and the herds can soon reap the benefits of fire. They are now drawn to the sound of thunder and the sight of rain clouds more than 40 miles away. But there's one final river to cross, the Mara, and the grasses will be theirs. The cycle complete. The will of the herd prevails, though in the final rush, a few are injured or killed. of the other they climb. Some don't make it. Broken bodies lay strewn along the river bank. Others left immobile in shock. But for the majority, the lucky ones and the strong, they've arrived. The vast herds of hoofed animals that once existed in Europe, North America, and in the southern part of Africa no longer exist. But here, on the plains of the Serengeti, the wildebeest still move to the rhythm of the seasons. It's the last of the great terrestrial migrations.
Next Sunday, BBC Two visits the ice-capped mountain peaks of Africa and the unique wildlife living there. That's at 6.30. Hugo van Lawick captures the precarious existence of the cheetah on Thursday night on BBC One, 8 o'clock.